Okay. So this is a real life spectrograph to catch pink salmon. Okay. So this is not a this is re the real spectrograph from somebody <coughs> saying that phrase to catch pink salmon. Notice the funny uh, phrasing on the ch and the s sound, right? So those are those are obviously consonants as opposed to vowels. And because the teeth are pretty much together when those are said, you get a very high pitched voice. Catch salmon. So you get very high um, notes because, or high frequencies because of saying those things. Okay? So looking at the vowel sounds uh, compared to the chart. So two, the um, low frequency is at about uh, 300 hertz. The second form is about 1300 hertz. That takes us about here, near the hood on the chart. Going to the next vowel at um, catch, that goes about here on the chart, where I have about 500 versus about 1800 for the first two frequencies that are heavily promoted. Uh, pink goes up there next to hit and hit, hit and head, somewhere in there, pink, somewhere up there. And salmon is right about there where the hat sound is. And so based on those two frequencies, you can do a pretty decent job of identifying what vowel sound gets said based on just the first two overtones uh, that are pronounced in somebody's spectrograph. And that's the basic principle. I haven't talked about consonants, because that's really complicated. But for vowel recognition, at least, that's the basic idea of how voice recognition software works. All right, um, last example. This is what I call the Hunt for Red October example. You're, you're Jonesy on the Red October. Everybody remember that movie with the Alec Baldwin? There's a submarine, the, submarine under the water. There's a Russian sub sitting out there, and you're trying to figure out where's the Russian sub. Okay? So there's a radio wave that occurs, but there's a lot of other things in the ocean. Whales, waves, all just thunderstorms. A lot of random noise. But somewhere inside of this random noise is a sine wave. So a lot of random noise. And inside that random noise is a sine wave. How do I identify it? That's the basics of a Fourier transform. Being able to do a Fourier transform to figure out what the frequency is. So just simply using the, the Fourier transform in Mathematica, there's the Fourier transform. Down here is all the noise at a bunch of frequencies. Okay? Plus the Russian sub that's about to blow me up. Okay? So that way, so this, the sine wave is hardly apparent. There's not exactly something going like this going through the noise. But the Fourier transform is a computational tool that allows us to cut through the noise and see the, the most pr uh, pronounced frequencies that are being promoted. All right, so a little quiz. Top left, noise. Um, top right, a triangular wave, so a triangle waves. The uh, left is a pure sine wave, and the right is a square wave. So those are your four options. Which one's which? Noise, square wave, sine wave, triangular wave. Which one's which? One of them's obvious. Top left is noise, OK, so we're happy with that. Okay. Top, top right is, why do you think the top right is a sine wave? Because it's only one, there's only one. Piece. There's only one frequency, so the top right is your sine wave because there's only one frequency there. Okay? So which one's the triangular wave and which one's the square wave? Square wave, bottom left. Square wave, left. Bottom right, triangular, that's right. Okay? How can you identify the, the how can you distinguish between the triangular wave and the square wave? Well, which one looks more like a sine wave? The triangular wave or the square wave? Triangular. So you need less help to modify it to get a triangular wave than a square wave. So there's less help in these higher frequencies to get a triangular wave. You need more help to get a square wave to kind of force those sharp corners. Okay? So, uh, these go, I think, like 1 over n, and the triangular wave, I believe, goes like 1 over n squared. The uh, strength of the frequencies can go further out. Okay. So with that, that's the end of my talk, and thank you very much.
questions? What makes um, consonants harder? Say again? Can you explain what makes consonants harder to identify? Consonants? Um, basically, your mouth isn't wide open. Okay. For an E sound, E, your mouth is, it's, your mouth is fairly wide open. For like a D, your mouth is moving. D. For a lot of sounds, there's the, for a lot of sounds, your mouth is moving to construct the sound. So really just like the sharper consonants? Yeah, so there's dental consonants, there's sharper consonants, I forget all the terms for this. But there's different classifications of the consonants depending on whether your mouth is moving or not, if your tongue is pressed against your teeth or not. Um, I forget all the different things about this. I think there's some consonants that actually can be modeled with like a four tube model. And it's a pain in the neck to solve the differential equation that does it. But it can be done for a, for a few of them. So you just find more peaks, really? Uh, you're finding more peaks, and uh, there's just more variables in the, vo the shape of the vocal tract in order to figure out what this, the constants say. Okay. Yeah. Is there a difference in the waveforms between major and minor chords? Uh, oh, good question. Yeah. I have no earthly idea. Real uh, good question. The, so the, the majors are, are going to be uh, you, you have a note, and then you have. Um, uh, okay, so basically, basically the, uh, the the perfect interval is always going to be uh, three times an octave, and whenever you have five times times an octave times, you have five times the power of two times the power of three. That means you're either going that's either a major triad or a minor triad. I'm not, I don't I don't remember which. Wait, 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 let me think. Which should it be? Okay, so so five quarters is a major triad. So so it's, if it's five times an octave times a multiple of three. Yeah. And then if it's 1 over 5 times an octave times 1 over 3, that's minor. Yeah. Any other questions I can't answer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what was the motivation for using a uh, trig to look at sound in case as opposed to other applications? Like, was this just more accessible, you thought, to a wider yeah, audience? Yeah, pedagogically, or? I thought this was something that I could sell to a high school audience. <laughs> Or something that was just in pre-cal, you know, playing, you know, playing with Van Halen to get people's interest, as opposed to, you know, talking about other applications. Okay. Is there a relationship between, like, because I know, like, Pythagoras and Euclid, like, they both had the fractions to create a basic C major scale. Is there a relationship between the Fourier transformations of the different frequencies to those fractions? Like how all the different sinuses, is there a connection between those two to show that the half is actually what creates the octave? Uh, that's basically from, basically from solving the wave equation. Okay. So the wave equation, you keep two endpoints the same, pluck it, right. and if you cut the length in half, then the frequency goes up by a factor of two. So I think that's probably the easiest way to, to say it is basically from solving that, the, the differential equation that governs the wave equation. So if it goes up by a factor of two, you can do it in half. Just that means it's exponential. Yeah, it's the power of two thing. Right? Yeah. It's you're finding which fractions are close to powers of a half. A real wave is going to cause displacement in both um, space and time. So, the, 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 okay. so that's what it is. So the displacement of time is supposed to displacement in space. Okay. And typically, that's counted for sound as one. Or what do you mean? Like, do we just not count that when we're doing um, when we're finding the sound, or is that just that more? Or do we just say like the time over which it is occurring? Well, that was the T, was this the time of you're listening okay. to the sound. Okay, so changing time. Yeah, so when I played, when I had Mathematica play sine of 880 pi T from T equals zero to one, it only plays for one second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Thank you very much.